Before, I think two weeks back it struck me, I think Rahul walked up to me and told me that there's going to be TEDx in Flav and do you want to talk and I decided yes, but I didn't know what to talk about. So, I'll just say a stat to get me started. How many of you here know that it's punishable by law to eat gum in four countries? Come on, come on. Okay. Break that little bubble of yours that has nothing to do with my talk here. What I'm going to talk about today is I'm going to talk about how I'm going to talk about a sport actually that is 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 very attached to me. I've played the sport all my life. It's impacted me in a big way, both good and bad. Good after playing the sport, it's changed my very outlook on life. Bad, I had a couple of serious injuries and I ended up 35 kilos fatter. So. I'll be talking about the world's longest running family entertainer movie and it has everything that you'd expect a family entertainer to have. It's got love, it's got deceit, it's got intrigue, it's got sadness and it generally ends on a happy note for one side and on a sad note for the other. Yes, that's right, I'll be talking about rugby today. Um, made low on forever, people like me have made money off it in the past and hopefully I'll make money off it in the future. Uh, what? is rugby. When I said rugby, most of you had a puzzled look on your face and I spoke to so many people who think rugby is basically a sport where 15 overgrown kids are on a field fighting for one ball and trying to put it on the other end to score some points off. Trust me, that's not it. I'll start off with a video. It's one of the most technical plays in a rugby book. Uh, it's actually my favourite team, Wales playing Ireland and Wales are attacking the ball. Wales are in red and Ireland are on are the green side. Okay, sorry guys, there's a small problem I guess. So, uh, so, there are two forms of rugby basically, there's the 15s and there's the 7s. I think the name makes it pretty clear, 15s has 15 people in a team, 7s has 7 people in a team. Uh, rugby union is basically a high contact team sport, a very injury prone sport, uh, which, is, which started in England in the 19th century and English being a very gracious people that they are, let others become very good at it. Uh, right now the best teams in the world who play rugby are New Zealand, uh, Ireland, Wales, uh, we have a good team in Singapore, we have a Southeast Asia, Asia I think Singapore, Japan, the Thai, Thailand have a decent team. Um, so how did rugby start? This gentleman called William Webb Ellis is often credited with the innovation of starting rugby and the whole idea for him was he was playing a football match, this was in 1823 in England. And he was so frustrated that his team weren't able to score a goal. He caught the ball, ran towards the other end, threw the ball, threw the ball in the goalpost. That's how rugby started. But rugby really took off in 1956 with uh, the start of rugby union. That's when the union was formed. A bunch of rules were laid down, and rugby started professionally. Universities in England started having having it. Oxford, Cambridge, I think, was one of the first pioneering institutes. Uh, to have rugby in their curriculum. In 1995, an organization called World Rugby was formed. And for the very first time in 1995, they lifted all restrictions on payment to players. So, 1995 was the year where rugby got transformed from an amateur sport to a professional sport. And in 20, 20 years, 20 to 25 years, we have rugby everywhere, all corners of the go uh, globe. We have teams, very capable teams right now, very capable leagues, leagues which produce great players. But there's still one thing that separates rugby from football. One of the highest earning footballers right now is Cristiano Ronaldo. And uh, he earns about 300,000 pounds a week. The highest earning rugby player, Johnny Wilkinson, who's an English scrum half, earns 1 million pounds a year. And the vast difference is because football started in the 1800s, 1900s, 1905, Manchester United was formed, and rugby, 1995. But I think the kind of development rugby has had in 20 years, if that was possible in football, in 20 years, if we've gone from paying a player 20 pounds a week to 1 million pounds a year, I'm 100% sure uh, that. Uh, Eventually, we will go to the standards of football. 
uh, and we will climb the heights what football is right now. So my topic is, so this is actually one of the greatest rugby players ever trying to do a try in the opposite end. That's a crunching tackle as we call it and this is actually a very, uh, this is a picture that has great significance because the Scottish Tourism Board uses this picture on their website to promote tourism, to promote people to come visit Scotland. They want people to visit Scotland and this is one of their main promotion strategies. So what I will be talking about today is how rugby can impact Indian society. And uh, so before I start that, I'll just give a little overview about India and why I think it will be successful in India. So basically everything in India happens because it's not supposed to happen. It will just happen because there's this big accident. 19, let me explain, 1983, there was this massive accident. India won the World Cup against all expectations. So cricket is the next big thing. You know every young kid trying to pick up a bat and a ball and start playing cricket and hoping that he'll be the next Sachin Tendulkar. The next big accident in India happened in 91-92. We had a great Prime Minister, we had a very forward-looking Finance Minister who opened India up to the globe. He wanted India to come, he wanted the world to see India differently. And what this did was it opened the gates for great foreign investment. Like all the MNCs started coming into India with, with budgets previously unthinkable. Um, they started investing in India. They started promoting India on the globe. And Coke was, I think, one of the first companies to do that. And we right now live in an India where we are adding more Jaguars than the population of uh, Singapore. We are adding more cell phones than the population of New Zealand twice over. We are buying Rolls Royce. We are adding more BMWs than what BMW sold for the first 50 years of its life. And it's shocking that India is changing and it's changing very fast. So why not take one of the most underrated sports in the world, one of the sports that's least marketed in the world and, and you know, make it big. Make it big as such. So, uh, I think what, where we need to start is more investment from the government. I think government pays 16 lakhs to rugby a year. And of that, 11 lakhs goes to the salaries of the rugby chiefs. So, I think we have 5 lakhs left that actually is invested in promoting and helping the game of rugby. And it is often... So, where I come into the picture is this summer, when I was recovering from an injury, a very serious back injury, I had a friend uh, called Arvind Sundaram. He's an Ireland national player. He walked up to me and he said, uh, I'm going to try this small thing. You know, you want to help me out? I said, why not? So what we did was we went to orphanages and we met them. We convinced the people who funded these organizations. And we took 10 kids from four, organiz four orphanages. So that's 40 kids. And we took kids who were aggressive in nature, who the people who were in these orphanages felt that these kids had behavioral problems. And we basically started teaching them rugby. And uh, this was a three-month program. We had seven kids left by the end of it. And the first day I had a kid pull out a knife and he threatened us that he wanted to leave and all of that. So that was there. But uh, by the end of it, the seven kids who remained, what I saw in them literally blew me away. These seven kids, did not treat each other as, as enemies. They did not treat each other by race, religion, caste. They treated each other as teammates. They slept together, they ate together, they wanted to... All they wanted to do was play rugby and it changed the, their very outlook they were looking at life with. They... I offered... One of them actually came with me and he wanted to eat non-wit. So I said, come, why not eat? And he said, no, because I, I won't be able to play rugby tomorrow morning. And... Uh, one of them tried to sneak drinks into where they were staying. And, and uh, to a great shock to both me and my friend, none of them touched it. And when I asked them the next day, why not? They said that uh, playing rugby will become art. So I decided to do a little research on how we can use this to help, help make India, to help improve the society. So I started researching a bit and I found that uh, the prisons department of Delaware in the US published a report in 2011 saying 69% of the inmates 
who leave prison, who leave the prison, end up coming back. 69%. That figure, I didn't know how big it was until I mailed the prison chief and he replied back. He said that they have a thousand people. 680 of those prisoners are prisoners who've been in that prison before. And of the remaining, 210 he expects to come back. Now then I started to do a little research about why these kids want to go back to prison. Uh, what I found was these prisoners have no skill set whatsoever. They come back to prison because they view prison as a place where we get three meals a day, shelter, and where they can just stay without any problem, without the problem of opposite gangs attacking them, or rival gangs attacking them for that matter. And uh, I asked if we could start that program there, and he said, you can't because these guys have that vengeance in them, and when they get on the field, they won't go to play rugby, they'll go to kill the other guy. They have that vengeance built in in them. So I started looking up on the internet about how I can help some of the other people, how I can promote this idea. And uh, I basically stumbled upon this movie called The Gridiron Gang. And what happens is Dwayne Johnson basically in the movie uh, starts American football, which is very similar to rugby, which is also a very high contact sport. And he changes the outlook of 41 inmates. And of them, only three of them come back. Now, these statistics are very, very scary to think about because I have a sister out there, I have a mother out there, and I don't want them to get injured. And I have a sister who stays in Delhi. No offense to any of the Delhiites here, but it's one of the most unsafe places I know. And I don't want my sister to get into shit. So I decided to use this as a platform to promote that idea. And... Uh, so I was actually in Punjab and I was going, we saw this Akada, so we decided to get down and go in. There were these huge guys built. So I had a rugby ball in the trunk, so I said, why not, you know, can we make them play? These guys were brilliant at it. First day they were making tackles that I probably did after six months of playing rugby. And they were lifting a guy and throwing him aside. So why not make, why, who? Why is it impossible to have such a successful team? I see built guys in India on the road every day. New Zealand pays 900,000 pounds a year to their scouts. We don't need a scout. All you need is to go on the road and see. <laughs> so, uh, I did, so, why I think this will be even more successful in India is because India is a very efficient country. Please don't laugh. I think it is a very efficient country. So, <laughs> There's, I have a story to back this up. In IPL, the first season, there was this player called Dwayne Bravo. And he signed for the Mumbai Indians. So he told his bosses that he had to be back in West Indies on so-and-so day. So he had, to leave, he had to leave on so-and-so day. So his management told him, it's not about when you have to leave, it's about when you have to be there. So he said, I have to be there on date X. So he played a game on date X-1 in Hyderabad, scored 68 runs of 37 balls. Mumbai Indians won that game, by the way. He went straight from the stadium to the airport, sat in Mukesh Ambani's private jet. First refueling Lisbon, Portugal. Second refueling Rio, Brazil. He was in time West Indies for his game against Australia two days after that. That's the efficiency with which Indians treat a sport. And that was IPL, possibly the biggest franchise in the world. Why, why not take this efficiency, channel this energy into something more effective than cricket? I think cricket is a very lame sport. I think it's overhyped. So I would like to conclude by saying if small bylanes in India produce one Sachin Tendulkar, produce a Virat Kohli, produce a Mahendra Singh Dori, I am 100% sure that these bylanes can produce a Dan Carter, these bylanes can produce a Brian O'Dockrell, these bylanes can produce uh, a Richie Macau. And those of you who don't know, they're just the legends of the game, they're legends of rugby. So I hope we change, I hope rugby becomes as big as what most of us players want it to become. And I just hope that we can do this in the coming years. Thank you so much.